Hi, my name is Mrs. Sarah Roselle, and I teach physical science at Rochester High School. Um, in addition to physical science, I also teach chemistry as well as AP chemistry. In the past, I have taught pathology. Um, I'm also scheduled to teach botany second semester, and I've also taught biology and block science. So I've done a little bit of everything at Rochester. I am starting my 15th year here at Rochester High School. I started my career teaching in Davison for a couple of years, and then I made the transition to Rochester High School in 2008, and I've been there ever since. So a little bit about me. Um, you see some pictures on here that'll tell you a little bit about myself. First, you see my dog, Watson. Um, we are definitely animal people here at the Roselle House. We have uh, Watson, we have some fish, and our quarantine acquisition was a leopard gecko. So those are the pets that we have roaming around. Watson is a rescue that we adopted last year in May. Um, and actually he was being fostered by one of our students. And so that's kind of how we um, got in touch and got a hold of our puppy. Then you also see my own two children, Everett and Addison. Everett started TK this year at Brewster. He is happy to be a Brewster Bulldog. And Addison is in third grade in Lake Orion Community Schools where we live. I am a Spartan through and through. I'm really missing Spartan football, but I also know that we'll be back and we'll be able to enjoy some games hopefully next fall. Um, so looking forward to that time, but I definitely bleed green. That's where I got my undergraduate degree as well as my master's degree in curriculum and teaching. And on the bottom there are some of my teaching friends as well as my classroom. Um, on the very left of the picture is Mrs. Kuzmano. She teaches English and leadership at Rochester High School. On the very right, you see Mrs. Honeycutt. She is a special education teacher and a co-teacher at Rochester High School. And then you also see Mrs. Gambino or Miss Gambino. She was a student teacher last year with Ms. Kuzmano. And in the background there, you see my classroom. I'm really looking forward to getting back there when it's safe, when we can all uh, come back together when it is deemed safe and acceptable for us to do so. So that is a little bit of my home and a little bit about me. My husband, Jason, and I live in Lake Orion with our family, and we have lived here for probably 13 years, I believe. Um, so it's been a while. So there's that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about our curriculum and our class. I think this quote pretty much sums up my views on science education. Um, I believe a lot of science education when I went to school and before was really focused on facts and just memorizing facts, whereas I try to focus a lot on the problem solving aspect and the investigative aspect of science as much as possible. Um, and so we'll be doing a lot of drawing out what we're thinking, discussing what we're thinking, proposing our ideas to small groups and large groups, asking questions about things that we notice. Um, to come to like a group consensus and hopefully allow us to ri arise um, or to allow us to get to a certain level of understanding about a content piece. Okay. Um, and my view of science education is supported by our current standards, which are known as the next generation science standards, oftentimes referred to as NGSS. And NGSS standards are composed of three components. The first are the science and engineering practices. And the science and engineering practices are kind of like skills and things that scientists much, must do in order to come to an agreement and uh, learn more about a certain phenomenon or a certain observation that they made. It involves designing and building models, um, designing systems, and really kind of like displaying our thinking visually. And then we have our content or our disciplinary core ideas. And those are the content pieces that we will be covering. Um, the DCIs or disciplinary core ideas are really threefold in the NGSS standards. There's an earth science component, a life science component, and a physical science component. So in our class, we really focus on the physical science component of the NGSS standards. Um, and that is the content piece that we uh, focus on. The last piece to the puzzle are what we call the cross-cutting concepts. And the cross-cutting concepts are things that you see across all branches of science, things like scale, 
proportion, um, systems and system models, energy and matter, structure and function. Those are things that really kind of go across all of the science practices or all of the science disciplines. And so we focus on that as well. And so my whole philosophy on teaching and why I teach the way I do really is rooted in these uh, three dimensions of science education, which is also, again, supported by our current state standards as uh, a route or as provided by the NGSS standards. So a little bit about our course from the syllabus. Um, the content you can see there, we really start with the chemistry piece. And then second semester, we will be making our way into the physics piece. And although the physics piece looks short, you see just basically energy and waves, forces and motion, those um, subjects are really, really heavy and really, really deep, so they take a decent time. Then you see the chemistry is kind of our first six bullet points. Those ones, although it is only a semester's worth of material, um, we do go pretty deep into those as well to cover all of the core content for uh, the physical science aspect of NGSS. Supplies, um, a place to keep papers and supplies together. Usually if we are in person, I recommend a three ring binder with some dividers and some loose leaf paper or a notebook. Um, for our class in this in learning environment, we definitely will be taking some notes on a separate sheet of paper, but a lot of what we do is digital. Nothing will be required to be printed, but students might wanna print stuff to add to their binders to keep as a resource. In addition, um, a scientific calculator, obviously at this point, I can't control whether they're using cell phones or not, so that'll be totally fine. But if we do ever, uh, when we do ever go back to the in-person environment, they are going to need a basic scientific calculator that can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. If they have a graphing calculator for math class or a different type of calculator they need for math class, that would work as well. No need to have multiple calculators. So what can you do to help your student? Um, really, I really want focus on helping our students learn how to advocate for their own education. I think a lot of my students really struggle with um, trying to figure out what they need help with and really asking the right questions. And so I try to work with them as well on asking the right questions and how to approach a, a superior or a teacher or an administrator with an issue. And so I really think that that's one of the biggest things that we can do as the adults that are helping our students is to really help them learn how to advocate for their education. Talk to them about the questions they can ask, how they should approach a situation, give them some options in terms of how they can problem solve. Talk to them about the lessons we learned from our mistakes and things that they consider to be failures. Um, one of the biggest pieces to science, I believe, is that we are constantly making mistakes, but then we learn from our mistakes and move forward. And students really have a hard time with making mistakes because all they see is that they made a mistake and it's a failure. And I don't necessarily think that's true. And so I think it's really important in looking at like what can we learn from this and how can we improve upon it moving forward. Focus on what they're learning in addition to their grades. So what is the content and what uh, kind of development are they getting academically beyond grades? And then using Google Classroom with them to discuss what we're learning or working on in class. So they can all access Google Classroom. You're gonna have to have them log in so you can see what we're doing, but you can then see what we're working on in class and therefore you can have some directed conversations where they can tell you specifically what we're doing. How can your student be successful? Things that they should worry about. Um, definitely participate. It's okay to be wrong. And that goes back to that whole idea of learning from our failures. The biggest piece of science is asking some questions, finding answers to those questions and testing some things out. And if we're wrong, that's okay. We just learn from it and move forward. As far as participation goes, if they have the ability to do so, it is really important for them to keep their cameras on during class because that will allow them to participate a little bit more fully, as well as it will allow me to see their facial expressions, which tells me a lot about their level of understanding and their engagement. Complete all assignments, utilize practice opportunities as provided. Not everything will be graded, but it's still important to complete it. Use a planner or some sort of calendar to keep up with due dates, whether it's digital or a physical paper planner, it's really important that they do so, so they don't get left behind. Ask questions when they come up, not just at test time. Um, keep the Google Drive organized with all the digital documents. It's really easy for them to just drop them all into their main Google Drive and then everything gets lost and they don't know where everything is. 
So we did a little uh, digital citizenship at the beginning of the school year. So hopefully they paid attention. One part of that was about keeping their drive organized and having a folder for every single class they are in so they can actually move those documents into those folders. So step one is creating a folder for every class. And then step two is obviously putting the stuff in those folders. Checking Google Classroom regularly, reviewing nightly, scheduling a time to meet with me if there's any problems, and using Parent and Student View to keep up with your class progress. If you need me, feel free to shoot me an email. My email is up on the screen. And thank you for allowing me to be a guest in your home with your teenager. I hope you all have a great night.